What's up, everyone, and welcome to another daily episode where we're going to talk about Fronten. Fronten, a distributed denial of service botnet that came to light in March 2020 and is much more powerful than previously thought, is a system developed for coordinated inauthentic behavior on a massive scale. Think spam bots, disinformation campaigns, etc. Now, that's according to new recently published research by threat intelligence firm Nysos. But before we get started, I have made some adjustments to how I will be providing content going forward. And of course, I want to share it with you. I now have three primary categories, there are dailies, retrospectives, and weeklies. In the dailies, we will go through just the facts, the story as it hit the wire. Then there are retrospectives, where I will take specific stories and give insights about what these events mean. Basically, I'm splitting my current dailies into two episodes. Why, you might ask? I want to provide more real-time episodes about the facts out there for those of you who don't have time to read but can listen to my melodious voice gently ushering the day's cyber news into your ears. The visual effects in my episodes just might help you remember the important parts. Then if you're interested in what I decipher from these events, you can watch my hopefully two or three times weekly retrospectives. Now these do take longer to produce because I have to go in the woods and sit on a rock and put my chin on my fist and go, hmm, what does it all mean? Then I usually go off on a tangent about something about saving the planet from plastics. But when I do get back on track after a couple of days, I finally dig up the gems that I share with you. Finally, the current structure will still have the weeklies where I go through all of the events of the previous week at record speed for you to just recap. So you have three opportunities to internalize this very important information. I do hope to streamline some of this stuff soon so, you know, that I can start adding interviews and, of course, get back to what I really love to do, which is deep dives into things like ransomware gangs to see how their attacks actually work and showing you guys all the cool things you can do with technology. Oh, drat these computers. They're so naughty and so complex. I could pinch them. The front-end system includes a web-based dashboard known as SANA that enables a user to formulate and deploy trending social media events en masse. The system creates these events that it refers to as news breaks, utilizing the botnet as a geographically distributed transport. The existence of Fronten, an IoT botnet, became public knowledge following revelations from BBC Russia and ZDNet in March 2020 after a Russian hacker group known as Digital Revolution published documents that it claimed were obtained after breaking into a subcontractor to the FSB, the Federal Security Service of the Russian Federation. Congratulations, you're doing a great job by wanting to learn about Fronten. I appreciate your support by watching my episode about it. If you are new to my channel and have not already, please consider subscribing to my channel and smashing the bell to be notified when I upload new episodes where I give you insights into the newest, important cybersecurity news stories like this. With my insights, you can be better prepared to protect your company, your family, and yourself against these and other cyber attacks. So hit the subscribe button now and let's continue learning about this story together. So further investigation has traced the analytical system to a Moscow-based company known as Zero Day Technologies, also known as the number zero DT, with links identified to a Russian hacker by the name of Pavel Sitnikov, who was arrested in March 2021 on charges of distributing malicious software via his Telegram channel. Fronten functions as the back-end infrastructure of the social media disinformation platform, offering an army of compromised IoT devices for staging DDoS attacks and information campaigns by communicating with a front-end server infrastructure over VPNs or the Tor Anonymity Network. SANA, on the other hand, is designed to create fake social media persona accounts and manufacture these news breaks, which prefer or which refer to events that create information noise with the goal of shaping online discourse by means of a response model that allows the bots to react to the news in a positive, negative, or neutral fashion. 
What's more, the platform enables the operators to control the amount of likes, comments, and reactions a bot account can create, as well as specify a numeric range of the number of friends such accounts should maintain. It also incorporates an albums feature to store imagery for the bot accounts. The findings come as Meta Platforms said it took steps against covert adversarial networks originating from Azerbaijan and Iran on its platform by taking down the accounts and blocking their domains from being shared. Cybersecurity company Mandian, in an independent report published recently, revealed that actors aligned with nation states such as Russia, Belarus, China, and Iran have mounted concerted information operations in the aftermath of Russia's full-scale invasion of the Ukraine. Now, Russia aligned operations, including those attributed to Russian, the Rusin, and pro-Russia actors, have thus far employed the widest array of tactics, techniques, and procedures known as TTPs to support tactical and strategic objectives directly linked to the conflict itself in the Ukraine, Mandiant noted. Meanwhile, pro-PRC and pro-Iran campaigns have leveraged the Russian invasion opportunistically to further progress long-held strategic objectives of their own. With that, I say thanks for watching. Don't forget to share and subscribe and smash the bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.